Hey there guys and welcome to the final part of the Terra Drive series. In the last part I talked about the Sound Blaster card needing a minus 12 volt rail to work properly. Uh, to give a quick demonstration of what's wrong at the moment, uh, I've just fired up the Sound Blaster Diagnostics program. 8 bit testing. As you can see, digitized sound works pretty damn well. The problem is when it comes to ad lib music. It sounds like it's not working. It sort of is, but it's not being amplified properly. If I put the camera up to the speaker and play that again. You can sort of hear it, but barely. To solve this problem, we need to create a negative 12 volt supply just for the sound card. Now, I went online looking for the easiest way to do this and I found a specific IC, the ICL7660. It's manufactured by a couple of different companies and basically with only two external capacitors, you can invert a voltage to a negative voltage. So if we put in plus 12 volts, we get minus 12 volts out. So I'm just gonna follow the data sheet implementation and build it onto the sound card. Okay, here's the sound card in question. Let's take a look at where the minus 12 volt supply actually enters the card. So at the back of the system is here. These are the pins along the sides of the slot. The minus 12 volts comes in on pin B7 and what I want to do is isolate that pin from the actual ISA slot connector because if I ever want to reuse this card in a different system I don't want the power supplies to interfere with each other so I'm going to uh, cut the trace that would normally supply minus 12 volts to the card uh, from this pin and then we'll build the circuit and sort of fix it to the card. I, uh, I ordered the component itself from uh, RS Components I actually made a mistake when ordering. Um, I wanted a through hole one, but I ordered a surface mount one. So I got all this packaging for this tiny, tiny little chip. That's it. It's bloody tiny, uh, but it's uh, not a super fine pitch. So I think we can make it work. So uh, according to the data sheet, we need two external capacitors. Both of them are 10 microfarad. Uh, and of course they should be rated for the voltage that you're going to be supplying and extracting from the chip. So here they are. They're monstrous compared to the chip itself, aren't they? 10 mic, 25 volts. This is going to be another one of those things where it's way too awkward for me to try and build it in front of the camera. So I'm going to pause and then I'll show you what I've done. Okay, I've built this up just using uh, some point-to-point -point construction. Sort of see the label side of the chip, so pin one is at the top left. I've got the capacitor going between pin two and pin four as per the data sheet, and the other capacitor between pin five and ground uh, with the positive side facing towards ground because it's a negative voltage. Uh, the output comes from pin five, which is where this capacitor has its negative side pointing to. And the input is up here at pin 8. So we'll attach some wires and then maybe put a bit of heat shrink around this so that it doesn't uh, short out when it's inside the case. Uh, this floating leg here is connected to ground, I believe. Yes, that's connected to ground, which is pin 3. Uh, so just to begin with, I used a, uh, just a standard razor blade to actually scrape away the copper from the uh, edge connector here nice and cleanly and just expose a bit of the trace here so I can solder onto it. Okay, I've got it built and I've got it connected to the card. Just using uh, a couple of short wires and a bit of double sided tape here just to keep it in place. Now I also have these wires up here going up to my power supply which is currently set at 12 volts. So now if I put this probe on the minus There we are, minus 11.8, that's close enough to minus 12. Let's get this card back into the Terra Drive and see if that does the trick. All right, sound card's installed and no magic smoke, so that's a good start. Let's just double check our work.
there it is, minus 11.8. And if we swing over to the screen and run Diagnose again. 8-bit testing. Good start. Also notice that the volume uh, is a lot higher now and also the sound is a bit clearer. So maybe it was affecting the digital and I just didn't notice to begin with. Uh, but here's the big test now. Beautiful. And now, of course, Oh yes, perfect, awesome. In fact, that's a bit loud. Oh, that's so much better. Alrighty, for the last part of this, I want to combine the audio out from the Sound Blaster and the audio out from the system into one output so it can be connected to my uh, retro gaming setup in the, in the living room. Without the schematics, I wasn't able to work out how to combine everything so that I could have the Sound Blaster sound coming from the system's little internal speaker as well as both the system and the sound card's audio coming out of the line out jacks at the same time. I'd, without the schematics it would have been you know, nearly impossible to, to work it out. It's a, it's a multi-layer board as well. I did try to, uh, to sort of buzz it out with the multimeter, just didn't come to pass. So. What I'm going to do is just break into the circuit here on these two uh, these two caps here, which are the uh, the output filter caps. I'm just going to get in uh, in series with those with a couple of resistors and build a simple audio mixer to mix the uh, line level audio out from the Terra Drive with the line level audio out from the sound card. So at least I can get both of their output uh, mixed out of the uh, RCA jacks on the back. There are a few suggested values for this. Some people said uh, like uh, like 10K, some people said 1K. So I'm just gonna uh, jump in the middle and use uh, 6K8, mostly because that's just what I happen to have lying around. And it's gonna go something like this. The existing solder pads are there like that. And at the moment, there's a capacitor sticking up like that. I'll solder one of the resistors like this so that the other one can solder on here and solder on there and then this will go off to the uh, off to the sound card. Makes sense? It makes sense to me. Let's build this. Fantastic, and the second one. I'll probably actually slip a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing over those just to, uh, just to make sure everything stays in place and doesn't short out.
We've got this lead here. Uh, one end of it has a headphone jack and the other end has wires. They'll connect to the other end of these resistors. I'll put some heat shrink over it and then the project should be complete. And I've just connected the ground to the uh, to the shell of the RCA jack there, and that about completes it. So uh, let's plug it all back together and uh, give it a test. Okay, with everything reassembled, all we see on the back is a little three and a half mil lead that goes from the sound card, it disappears through this little gap in the back. As you can see, there is only one connection to outside the system through the RCA jacks. Now with a bit of luck we'll get sound from both the Mega Drive and PC sides out through the same RCA jack. Well, that's the Sega side. How about the MS-DOS side? Yep, there's music. And do we have sound? Yes, we do. Well, that is awesome. One final check, just to make sure that it is actually mixing the audio. I turned on PC speaker sound for Commander Keen, but with ad-lib music. You can hear the ad-lib music playing and... That is certainly some PC speaker sound effects. The levels seem to be, well, fairly well balanced. The music is quiet, but you can still hear it. And the sound effects are definitely, well, there. Uh, and that about wraps up the Terra Drive mini series. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching it. And I hope you've enjoyed it, found it interesting. I've certainly enjoyed making it. This Terra Drive will be going into my uh, console mega setup. I do have to build a new switch box for my console mega setup because I've ran out of ports in the one that I built back in episode whichever it was. So that'll be a video or two or three maybe. And I also want to do something special because in the last month or so, uh, I actually reached a thousand subscribers, which is really exciting. Something I never even dreamed of uh, 
was never sort of uh, never even thought that I would develop a, any kind of following yet here we are um, and it's awesome so thank you all so so much for subscribing and uh, leaving your comments and saying hi on Twitter and whatnot I love it and uh, you guys are great so thank you very much for watching and keep an eye out for the 1000 subscriber thingamabob don't know exactly what I'll do for it yet, but you'll see very shortly. Thanks for watching and see you next time.